This is one on one session with the Forum IS founder and director Ayush Sinha. In this session, students are asked questions to test their preparedness for the personality test. One on one sessions are not mock panel sessions. So Shivam, you work for noise and vibration department in a Mercedes Benz, a car that none of us will ever be able to afford or uh, sit in. So I am unable to understand that. And while I believe that coming from an IIT and when you're working in that sector, you will get both to own that car and drive that car and occupy that car even as a part of your work. And now you're coming for civil services where these opportunities do not exist. So I'm unable to understand what is your motivation for joining the civil services? Sir, the first thing, I do get to feel the car as a part of my job, but owning and uh, owning a car is just a personal aspect of it. And, and, and when it comes to sir, this, uh, why I want to join civil services, so there are both personal and professional reasons for it. So personally, I grew up in a small village and that village in last 10 to 12 years have seen rapid transformation in its fate. So it has impacted everybody's life, including mine. So I had motivation of being part of that change and from that other side, sir. And that has motivated me to prepare for civil services because civil services provides me that platform. So professionally as well, civil services is a great job. It provides a challenging, as well as a unique experience. So these are the reasons why I am motivated for civil services. Shum, you are from Samastipur. Tell me a few things, five remarkable things about Samastipur. Sir, uh, five things about Samastipur. One is that uh, the area is known, famous for showing high level of religious uh, Religious tolerance, sir. We, we see uh, there's a religious harmony symbol of a tem temple is there, which is known as uh, Kudni Bibi's Makbara. And in that same temple, we have a, a Muslim Mazar as well as the uh, sibling as well, sibling, sir. This is the second thing is the area is famous for its agricultural products. Uh, it's a highly agriculturally dominated economy. So the third thing is that Samastipur Muzaffarpur belt is also famous for the textile sector. So fourth is regarding the presence of sugarcane uh, uh, factory in Samastipur. One of nine sugarcane factory that is there in Bihar is situated in Samastipur. So a fifth is related to the focus that the district is now giving towards education. Shivam, do you agree that there is corruption in Bihar? Sir, Bihar is uh, facing the challenge of corruption. So in certain aspect, it is visible, but to the extent has been reducing drastically over the years by efforts taken by government as well as the administration. All right. And what is the reason that Bihar has remained backward? Sir, uh, there are both uh, historical as well as contemporary reason. Uh, historical, historically, if we see, there were certain policies. For example, uh, in modern India, the zamindari system, and then the particularization policy, and then again led followed by the partition of the state. So these no, sure, to... those are excuses. Do not give such old antiquated reasons. You can't blame your past for your present condition, and you can't blame. Is Bihar doing everything right today? That is the primary question. So tell me what is, you know, so freight equalization did not damage Bihar. Bihar is not poor because Jharkhand was separated. Jharkhand is separated. Jharkhand is nowhere, not suddenly become rich. And you know? so those are not the reasons. Tell me what are the two or three reasons why Bihar has remained back. Sir, so Bihar has strength in agriculture because of being fertile land. But we, are not able to utilize that potential to our benefit. Agriculture is just contributing 20% to our GDP. So secondly, the industrial potential uh, is not increased in the state. The, the government 
has brought certain policies, but the effective implementation has not been uh, ensured because of which the trust of investor has reduced. So. The thirdly is the urbanization level as well. So currently in Bihar, we have hardly 10 to 11% urbanized area. And that is also skewed to three to four districts. So these are the reasons which did not lead to employment generation and uh, thus the Bihar could not grow a lot in economical aspects. What areas, if you are made an advisor to the chief minister of Bihar, what areas would you focus on to pull back Bihar on the path of, path of development and prosperity? So there are a few areas in which uh, uh, the focus should be given. So one is integrating the agriculture to the agro processing sector because that has seen as a sunrise sector in the state. So second would be utilizing the emerging economical opportunities. For example, the investment, uh, attracting the investment in a renewable sector and in uh, uh, ethanol plants as well. The third would be to focus on education and healthcare improvement. Because ultimately, even if we create the employment opportunities, but if we do not create the talent skilled workforce in the area, it will not be a sustainable process. So the focus should be there on education and healthcare as well. Sometimes it is said that Bihar also, between Western UP and Bihar, they said that Bihar also did not develop because Bengal did not develop. Can you explain to me how and why it is said? So what I can understand from this statement is that a lot of trade from Bihar used to happen through uh, West Bengal. And uh, because the, the nearest port that we see is uh, in uh, West Bengal. But I think because of that, it is told. So apart from that, sir, I do not have much clarity on this topic. What are some places of religious tourism in Bihar, according to you? So, uh, in Nalanda district, uh, if you look at, there are few Buddhist tourist, tourism places. Uh, we have a Bod Bodh Gaya temple in Bodh Bodhi tree is there. And apart from Pawapuri, Pawapuri is also famous for Jain tourism. So, apart from that, uh, in, there are multiple Hindu temples as well. Uh, that is also considered of religious significance. Such as, so you talked about both Gaya and you talked about Power Puri. Anything else? So district wise, if you see in Samastipur as well, as I talked about, there's a Pudni Vivi's Madhvara. And uh, apart from apart from that, sir, uh, Sesa Suri's Madhvara is also present in uh, Sasaram. How and, are you uh, forgetting Sikhism, Shivam? Yes, sir. In Patna, we have one uh, Akal Takht in Patna, sir, that is considered to be one of the great places for Sikh Sikhism. Sir. Why is it considered as one of the great places for Sikhism? Uh, sir, exactly, I am not able to recall, but it is related to one of the, uh, the Guru of Sikhism. He Which Guru? was related to... Was it Guru Nanak? So Guru Nanak was not directly associated with the reason. Sir, I'm not able to recall the name. Uh, Shivam, you're from IIT Khadakpur. Tell me some famous alumni from your college. Sir, a uh, few famous alumni. Uh, one is uh, the former governor of uh, Reserve Bank of India, uh, Sri Dulubai Subarao. And uh, second is... Uh, regarding current uh, CEO of uh, Alphabet, Mr. Sundar Pichai. And sir, apart from that, Mr. Binod Gupta is also, uh, who is the co-founder of Info Group. He also is a, he is also a remarkable alumni from our institute. India is seeking a permanent place in the United Nations Security Council. What do you think is India's most, what is India's strongest uh, argument for a permanent seat? So, uh, one of the strongest argument from India is the size of uh, economy and the size of population of the world that the country represents. So this, I think, is the most uh, strongest is the strongest reason from Indian side. The size of our economy and the size of population of the world that we represent. Shivam, uh, 
the Prime Minister recently launched PM Metra. Under what circumstances do we have to quickly do something like PM Mitra, otherwise we risk losing an industry. What is the problem? Why? why what is the reason behind launching PM Mitra? Sir, uh, PM Mitra is for promoting our textile sectors. And the textile sector is important right now because of few reasons. So one is that it is a labor-intensive industry and we need more and more employment to, to cater to the increasing demand. So second thing is that uh, uh, currently our manufacturing sector in our economy contributes significantly le less. So through textile, we want to promote it. And apart from this, sir, there's an opportunity in the world uh, that uh, post COVID, the, uh, the demand for Indian product is increasing. So considering all these elements, sir, we are promoting our integrated textile hub, which will boost our export. So what is the challenge that we're facing, Shivam? So the major challenge is regarding the logistic cost, so what I can think of. And if we create these kind of integrated hub, then the logistic cost will be reduced significantly. From current 13%, we are targeting it to reduce to around 8 to 9%. All right. Shivam, what does your name mean? Sir, so Shivam is related to Lord Shiva. And it also means something which is auspicious. Auspicious. Shivam, you do endurance running. Tell me, what is the difference in the fitness and health, fitness, health and longevity philosophy of the West versus the East? But sir, I am not aware of exact the philosophical difference. Last question. Uh, <clears throat> so, Europe alleges that Russia's war on Ukraine is being funded by India. How far do you agree to their allegation? Sir, the allegation that is there is only is because of India's rising import of Russian oil. Sir, so I do not agree with the statement that India is funding the Russian war uh, through this act, through this increased import. First is because we are taking this step, looking at our own energy security. And at the same time, sir, if we look at the import that is being done by European countries or the West in general, that has also increased significantly. Sir, considering this, I, th I believe that India's, the economical involvement with Russia is not contributing to not funding the war. Well, Shivam, your interview is over. Thank you, sir.